Good morning. Today is Friday, August 4th, 2023. The mitzvah in our Torah portion, the Parsha of Akev, which we discussed last night and earlier this week, Birkat Hamazon, the benching, the prayer that we say, grace after meals. It is the only bracha, the only blessing that we are explicitly commanded in the Torah to say when we have a meal that includes bread. And it is the model for the rabbis to then create a constellation of blessings before and after eating with specific language for each food to make the uh, um, expression of gratitude more meaningful, directed specifically to that which we enjoy, have enjoyed, and enlarging even further to accompany blessings, to accompany many aspects of daily life. Good smells, wondrous sights, momentous occasions in life. Saying blessings, saying a bracha, is an elemental part of being a Jew who believes in God. It takes our connection with God out of the constraints of formal prayer into every area and moment of our lives. But let's consider what does it actually mean? Baruch Ata Hashem. We usually translate, Blessed are you, God. What does it mean? to bless God. So, one thing it means, clearly, according to many commentators, it means thanks or praise. I am thanking you, God. I am praising you, God, for the food that I am eating or the experience that I am having. The Ramban, Nachmanides, puts it a little bit differently. That when we say a bracha, we say a blessing, we acknowledge that what we have comes from God. And that fits in with the context of the passage in our parsha that commands it. So listen carefully. We've shared part of this before, but a little bit different today. So the Torah says, Ve'achalta, ve'savata, uverakta Hashem elakecha, you will eat, you will be satisfied, and you will bless Hashem your God. And then the Torah says, He shomrelucha, pen tishkachas Hashem elokecha. Be careful that as I'm giving you this mitzvah to say benching, to bless God for the food that you've had, be careful that you do not forget God. Pen tochal v'savata, perhaps you will eat and you will be satisfied, but instead of blessing God, v'ram levavecha, you will become arrogant and haughty. V'shachakta s'ashem elokecha, and you'll forget God. V'amarta b'vavecha, and you'll say to yourself, kochi, it's my strength. V'otsem yodi, the energy of my hands, asaliyas achayel azeh, created all this stuff. That is, God says, eat and be satisfied, and bless God, and be careful that you don't eat and be satisfied and, and bless yourself. Think that it's all because of you. No. You should remember Hashem your God. He is the one that gives you the strength to be able to earn, to make, to produce, to present the food that you're going to enjoy. So that context makes it clear, as the Ramban explains, excuse me, as the Ramban explains, that a bracha at every enjoyment from the world is a frequent reminder, intrudes into our daily lives all the time of the famous passage, La Hashem Ha'aretz Amloa, the world and all of its fullness belongs to God. 
we are allowed to benefit from it, but only when we first acknowledge from whom it comes. And yes, we have put in effort, but our strength and our gifts ultimately come from God. That's the role, according to the Ramban, that the bracha serves for us, again, sprinkled throughout our daily lives. The Rav, Rav Yosef Salvechik, suggests a more daring meaning. It actually means to bless, Baruch Ato Hashem, to bestow a blessing on God. But how can a human bless God? I mean, we understand that God can bless us, but how is the reverse possible? The Rav explains that this mitzvah, again, contained in one specific instance in our Torah portion and then enlarged and into an entire structure by the rabbis, this teaches us the exalted station of a human being. That God has created mankind within creation in a way that we are granted license to bless God just as we are granted license by God to become a partner with God in the creation and the perfection of the world. This is what God allows us to do, to recognize the high stature that God believes we have. I would add a practical suggestion to this, that after thanking and praising and acknowledging and blessing God for the food God has given us, we should do the same for the person who prepared it, who served it, and who provided it. We should do the same for that person. Finally, a bracha before eating, according to one opinion, has a different source than the bracha after eating. Our Torah portion is talking about after we eat and we're satisfied and we bless Hashem, but many of the other brachos are blessings before we eat. And according to one opinion in the Talmud, it is based on a different verse in order to instill within us this idea that everything belongs to God. Listen, please, to the words of the Talmud Yerushalmi, the Jerusalem Talmud. Talmud says, The entire world is like a holy vineyard How is it redeemed? Meaning, if it's holy, how do human beings have the right to benefit from it? With a blessing. By saying a bracha. That means that before one pronounces the blessing, they are not supposed to even consider the food on the table to be theirs. Rabbi Soloveitchik explains, The table is set. The food on the table was bought with my money. But until I say, Baruch Ato Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Shehakol Niyeh Bivro, Blessed you God, King of the Universe, by whose word everything comes into existence, or Hamotzi Lechem in Haaretz, who brings forth bread from the earth, or Barei Priagafen, the creator of the fruit of the vine, until I say those words, the food doesn't belong to me. It's not mine. Rav Salvechik explains the blessing, the bracha, hamotzi lecha minaretz, b'rei priya gafen, shakol niya bevaro, the bracha is a legal act of acquisition. This doesn't belong to me, and the price in order to bring it into my position, possession to be able to enjoy it, the price is a blessing. That's the price. 
Once I have paid the price, once I have said the blessing, now the object belongs to me, just like when I go to the store. When I pay the price, the object belongs to me. So I want to share with you a technical detail of this, but a detail that is absolutely fascinating and something that hopefully we will all be able to focus on tonight. Friday night, Shabbos starts, we make Kiddush. Famous prayer, we all say this prayer of Kiddush. Friday night Kiddush consists of three components. There's a first paragraph, Vayahulu. That is simply a paragraph. That's not technically part of Kiddush per se. That's simply a paragraph from the Torah about the fact that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. Okay, that's kind of a setting the scene. That's kind of like giving us the context. But the actual Kiddush has two components. There is a bracha, Brei Priya Guffin, because we're holding a cup of wine, we make the blessing, blessed are you God, King of the Universe, for, who's, who's created the fruits of the vine. We make a bracha on the cup of wine. And then there's a longer bracha that talks about the holiness of the day and ends with the bracha, the words, blessed are you God, you sanctified Shabbos. So we have this paragraph that talks about the holiness and the meaning of Shabbos, and we have this single bracha, Brei Priya Gafen. What should the order be? So the Talmud says that it's disputed between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Beis Shammai, the Academy of Shammai said, first you make the longer paragraph, ending with the words, Mekadesh HaShabbos, you have the blessing sanctifying Shabbos, then you have the bracha Berei Priya Gafen, and then you drink the wine. Beis Hillel, and this is what we do, reverses the order. First we say the bracha Berei Priya Gafen, right, first we have Vayachulu, but again, let's t- keep that aside. First we make the bracha Berei Priya Gafen, then we have the longer bracha talking about Shabbos, and then we drink the wine. That's our practice, that's the universal practice. But that's a dispute in the Talmud. The question is, logically, Beis Shammai seems more correct because we have a general principle in blessings over foods that you make the bracha as soon as you're about to eat or drink the food. You don't want an interruption between making the bracha and eating. When you say, uh, I have a glass of water, you're going to say shakol, you should have the glass of water ready You say the bracha and then you drink. It's not the correct thing to say the bracha and then go take out a glass and then go fill it with water and then drink. There should be no interruption between the blessing for the food and enjoying the food. So if you're going to say the bracha, you should say it when you're going to drink the wine immediately after that bracha. Since there is a longer paragraph, the longer paragraph should come first then Brei Priya Gafen, and then immediately you drink the wine. That's logical. Why does Beis Hillel disagree? Why does our practice disagree in accordance with Beis Hillel? Rabbi Salvechik explains, based on this passage in the Talmud, before we say the bracha Brei Priya Gafen over the cup of wine, the wine does not belong to us. It's not ours. It still belongs to God. We have not yet done anything that grants us permission to enjoy this wine. If we were to say the paragraph of Kiddush first, holding a cup of wine, it would be as if we were making Kiddush with stolen wine. Now, that's not a good thing person shouldn't steal wine and use that wine to make Kiddush. But if we have not said the bracha, it doesn't belong to us. So holding it and saying the Kiddush over the cup of wine, but that's not right. It doesn't belong to us. Therefore, says Beis Hillel, first you make the bracha Brei Guffin. Now this cup of wine belongs to you. Now you can say the paragraph of Kiddush sanctifying Shabbos, holding a cup of wine, that belongs to you, and then you drink it. 
And that is the practice that we will follow tonight. So let me suggest to you and to me, we make the uh, Kiddush tonight. Let's focus on why we have this order and what it teaches us about what every bracha is supposed to mean. The system of blessings, before and after food, before and as accompanying extraordinary sights and experiences at times of joy, times of sadness. This whole structure allows us to elevate every moment of life, to be mindful of the meaning, the power, and significance of every moment of life. And so therefore to incorporate saying blessings regularly and expand our repertoire of brachos for different occasions is to live a transcendent life. And it starts with three simple words. Baruch Ata Hashem. My friends, I wish you a great day and I look forward to seeing you all soon in person.